Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Have a heavily requested song for you guys today, Floods by Pantera. So, uh, finally taking a crack at this one. Got a lot of sections to cover um, and a lot to get to today, so I'm just going to not try to talk it up too much at the beginning. But please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell so you know I release a new video, hopefully, if they let you know. And check out my Guitar Academy at GuitarLessons365.com. All right. Now, let's get back to the song. We are in a different tuning, as you can probably already tell. We are in um, C-sharp standard. So that means every string on the guitar is tuned down a minor third. All right, so hopefully you know what that is. But if not, I'm going to call them out for you. So this low string is a C-sharp, low one. Then an F-sharp. And then a B. Then an E. Then a G sharp and another C sharp. All right, so I'll have those notes in the description. Um, obviously, you probably want to take some sort of a tuner and tune with that to that. But anyway, so let's start here. We have this uh, clean section. Uh, these arpeggios that happen that, which is really just the verse. All right, so that is going to start here at the ninth fret. I'm going to show, what I'm going to do is he, he plays this a couple different ways. I'll talk about when he does the little variations. Um, so really, kind of like three different ways you'll see this played throughout the song, and I'll tell you uh, where they happen, um, so we don't have to keep covering it throughout the whole song. So, um, well, the whole video. So we're going to start here with ninth fret on the low E string. Obviously, I'm going to call it the low E, but it's a C sharp string, but. My head, I'm not smart enough to call out the proper string names here with these different tunings. So we're going to call it an E string. So uh, we have 9th fret on the um, low E, 7th fret on the A, 6th uh, fret on the D. So this. So you hold those down and pick across, then the open G, then back to the D string, 6th fret. So we have this. And then, then you're going to play the 8th fret there on the um, low E string. And then we have this, which is going to be picking now the D string. After you pick the 8th fret on the low E, a little pause. And then we have this, which is the 6th fret there on the D again, 7th fret on the A again. And then go back and to the G string and just pick across to the low E. So we have this. Very dissonant sounding. So we have this all together. And then you just repeat. Now the third time you hear him play this, pat the pattern is going to slightly change. And the, the change that he makes here is the way that's mostly going to be played starting like the second half of the uh, when the vocals come to the second half of the first verse on through the rest of the song. It's pretty much played this way, which is see if you can pick it up. So what's going on there? We have it's the same way, same thing the first half. So after this 8th uh, fret there on the low E, there's an extra hit in here coming. We have this. We, we start on the A string instead of, instead of going. We do this. So that was an extra. You hit the A string first, then D, then back to the A. So there's a little extra note in there at the beginning of it. And then the same thing after that. So instead of this. This. So that is the, the first time you hear this riff being played, the third time through the riff is when you hear that for the first time. Right here. When they then go to this little So that's gonna be the open low E there, and slide it to 
the fourth fret on the low E string, then two on the A, two on the D. Then play three on the low E, two on the um, A, and the open D. Then the E power chord. And then he does a little, little bar dive there. I don't want to do too much of that. There's enough of that coming up. <laughs> I'm going to be retuning a lot here. My guitar does not like this low tuning. All right. So from there, it goes back into the... Kind of halfway through this, then we'll do that extra hit version of this. So um, that that extra that little is the way it's played pretty much the rest of the song. There is a little break in the second verse section. We have this little, we have this. There's a kind of little pause where he just, when he gets to that G string, he just stops. But that is the only really kind of variation that you'll hear in there. Um, so that way, we've kind of covered the ways that he's gonna play that, uh, that verse. And of course, we'll go to that section. Sometimes I'll repeat this riff twice. All right, so it'll change up. If you know the song well, that's pretty much, it's very repetitive, which is, which is great. It makes it a little bit easier to learn. All right, so now let's take a look at this, um, the section that starts at the one minute, and, uh, one minute and nine seconds. So it's got a lot of add nine chords in it. It looks like this. All right, so that's gonna start here. Um, seven, I'm sorry, fourth fret on the A string, six on the D, eight on the G, and then the open B in high E. And then he doesn't actually play this next one as an, um, an add nine. It isn't, not that same add nine shape, it still is. We got that, because we got the open B there. But what he does instead is he, instead of going five on the low E, seven on the, a and nine on the D, he's actually playing the 10th fret there on the D. So a big stretcher. And you have the open G and the high, B and high E strings with it, so with this. So that a few times. Then we're gonna go to this, um, this, you can hit the low E open, 7th fret on the A, 9th on the D, 11 on the G. And then move everything up 2 frets. Don't let that low E string ring this time. Alright, so then uh, that is it for that part. We go back into the verse and everything again. Alright, so we get to the uh, 218 mark. We do this riff again, but he does a little variation to it. We have this... So this is the same. He does that, that F sharp, add nine chord, and then moves that note on the G string up as a melody up to the 14. And then you'll hear it played again. And then we have this like full melody at the end. So that's what, up to 14, 13, 11, then down to nine. So you're kind of just doing that little melody on the G string. And then we take it down to a, a B major chord. So it's just seventh fret on the low E, uh, nine on the A and the D, and the eighth fret there on the G. All 
All right, so the next uh, new riff we have is at the three minute and three second mark, and this is the whammy bar uh, riff. Sounds like this. <laughs> All right, so it's kind of just that kind of stuff, and then we have this really cool little chromatic look that happens in a second. So we're basically going to be taking this F sharp power chord, play the chord, and then dip the bar, and then let it come back up. So. After you do it like four times, then you go up and play. Third fret power chord, and back to two. And then that little bar dip on the second fret power chord again. And then you kind of do a bigger dive and jump up to the fifth fret, and then pull the, the bar up to make it sharp. So we have this. Now do the same kind of thing down the open E. And then you're going to do that little, play the second fret power chord, kind of scoop into it, and then pull it sharp. So to, that's the end of the riff, the way it is. All right, so just kind of that kind of thing going on. And then at the three minute and 28 second mark, we have the chromatic riff, which looks like this. You'll see this riff later that's kind of repeated. Uh, So that's heavily palm muted, really quick too. Open E power chord, first fret, second fret, and the third fret, let that ring. Then play three, two, three, two. And uh, let the second fret ring, so with this. So then at the uh, 3 minute and 36 second mark, we have, I kind of call it, it's like the start of the interlude section, which starts with a clean guitar part. So the clean guitar part to the interlude section, this is at the 3 minute and 36 second mark. So some big stretchy chords again. So we have that four, six, eight again there. Then you, so you pick across to the open B string, then come back to the G. Then we're gonna come down to the fifth fret there, five on the low E, seven on the A, and then pick nine on the D, then slide that up to the 10th fret. And then you can hit the open G string. So we have this. I'm sorry. And then back to this first chord. And this time, just pick across to the open B, and that's it. And then. So we have this open A string now for this final chord two on the D, five on the G, and the open B and high E. So you basically repeat that section twice. So 
just repeat that twice, and uh, then you have the clean interlude. And then the distortion kicks back in at the 3 minute and 50 second mark, and we have, uh, which is probably the main interlude section, right before the solo, sounds like this. So a lot of pinch harmonics and stuff going on here. Um, that's just kind of kind of really giving it a little bit of that dynamic stuff. So you know you know how to add those. I don't really have to go through those. All right. So the notes though. So four on the A, six on the D, over to the eight. Kind of palm muted too. Back to the uh, sixth fret there on the D. Then you get back to the G string, eighth fret. Slide up to nine. Back down the eight, and then go. Which is going to play six, hammer eight, pull off six, slide down to four, and then play the six. All right, and then we go to the next one. So that's that same little lick, five, seven, nine, back to seven, back to nine. Slide up to 13, and then 14, and play 13, 11. Next section. So we have two, it's off the low E, two, then four on the A, six on the D, back to the four. Slide six to seven on the uh, D, back to six, and then that same little, same little lick, which is four, hammer four, six, pull back up to four. Slide down to two, and then play four. And then kind of the same lick again, starting off the uh, second fret of the uh, A string. So we have this four, two, four, six, back to four, and then we, and that's kind of a kind of a bend and release. I did a six right there on the G. Then you play that same little lick. Hammer four, six, pull up to four, slide down to two. And then back to four. And then I end up with a get up a big bend slow bend there on the four and then you start over a little bit different melody though so that right there so it's that same four six eight slide eight to nine there and then nine to eleven and then a half step bend and release there at the ninth fret of the beat and then uh, the same thing here at the fifth fret. So kind of the same thing that we did before. Except there's a little bit different melody there. If you get up to the 14, then go back down to 13, a couple half step bend releases. Then to 11. Then the same thing that, that we did before the two. And four. All right, and from there we have the solo kicks in. 
Uh, so I'm gonna play the solo for you guys real quick and then I'll take you through it phrase by phrase. All right, so we start the solo here uh, with a series of oblique bends here. So that's gonna be starting there at the 12th fret on the B string and the 11th fret on the G. So you play those two notes together and then bend up the 11th, uh, the, the note on the G string. Release, and then back to the bend. So playing those two together. Then we're gonna now pick the B string and then the 11th fret there on the G and then bend it up. So we're gonna kind of do a series of those for a couple, a few times. So we have this. All right, then the next lick we have is this. So that's gonna be the 9th fret on the high E string. Then pull off 12 to 9 on the B into a bend at the 12th fret on the B string. So this. And then you basically do that again. So we have this. So we have. Let that ring a little bit, and then we have this. I'm gonna stop that there because we kind of have a, a, a rep repeated lick right after that part. So we have this. So you're gonna play 9, 11, 12 on the high E string, and then bend up the 11th fret. And then we have this. So we have this, uh, and th this part is kind of one of those kind of scattered um, blue scale licks. But uh, we basically have hammer 9 to 11 on the high E string, pull back up to 9. Then we go over to the 12th fret on the high E, then pull off 12 to 9 on the high, I'm sorry, we go over to 12 on the B, then go over to 12 to 9 on the high E. So we have this. Then pull, pull off 12 to 9 on the B. And it kind of sounds like he does that twice. Then he's going to go 12, 11, 9 on the G. Over to 9 on the, uh, I'm sorry, 11 on the D string. So we have this. And then we kind of just play 9, 11 on, I'm sorry, 11, 9 on the string over to 11 on the D. So we have this all together. Now here we get to a repeated lick that we do four times. So that is going to play 11 on the um, G string to 11 on the D, back to 11 on the G. That's where we go. We go. So we go 11 on the G to 11 on the D, and then go to 9, I'm sorry, on the G. And there was slight, just kind of pull the string down slightly. Kind of a quarter step bend. And then, then play 11, 9, 11 on the D. So we just. So that's the lick, and he does that four times in a row. So it's a lot quicker than that. All right, from there we have this. 
Well, that's something that's very reminiscent. That's, that part right there is harmonized. There's a ha high harmony in that. Uh, but the, the low harmony part is the most important one. It's the most apparent in the mix and the one he'd probably do live. So we're just going to cover that one. So we have this. Pick 11 twice on the D string, pull off the 9, then play 11 on the A. Then do the same thing, two frets lower. And then we're down to the uh, seventh fret on there on the D. It's the same pattern, but different uh, notes here. We're going to play seven twice, pull off the six, over to seven on the A string. Then we're going to do a half step bend release at the sixth fret on the D string. Then end it there at the seven on the um, A string. All right, next part looks like this. All right, so a lot of these, by the way, you're gonna, it sounds like this, the ending of one part of the solo is kind of overlaps with another. It's a lot of overdubs going there. He obviously recorded this solo in sections, so you, you kind of, the ending will kind of bleed over into the beginning of the next week. So if you're like, oh, how, how, I can't do that. How do I do that? I'm in two places at once. He's overdubbing it. So it's just kind of how we're going to do it, how he would do it live. So he's going to have to jump up and like cut off an ending of a part or whatever. So we have this um, kind of a uh, bend and release at the 14th fret of the high E string. Pull off to 12 and then back to the 14. And then kind of do it again. And then we have this. I have to draw the pick like I just did. So you pick, you you tap on the 19th fret, and then bend up a whole step at the 14th fret there. Release. You gotta release the tap and the bend, and then pull off to the 12th fret. Then jump up and grab a bit, that bend at the 19th fret there. And then up to the 22nd fret. And this kind of does a bend and, and does releases it like a half step and then brings it back and stuff. So kind of. All right, the next part this comes in over this. Kind of looks, So that is going to be sliding in to the 16th fret there on the B string and doing a half step bend and grab the 17th fret there on the high E. So just, you're bending up the half step and 16th on the B string while holding the 17th fret there on the high E. And kind of doing some more of those oblique bends like we did, we did earlier. And we had this. So that little lick right there that ends it is pulling off 16 to 14 on the B, over to 16 on the G string, then roll over to the 16 on the B, then back to that 16 on the G. So wait this. Then over to 14 on the B string, and then pull off 16, 14 on the G. And then this last little section of the solo. And there's lots of overdub noise over it. So we just have this. First, you're going to slide into the uh, 19th fret there on the B string. And then play 17, 18, 19 on the high E. And then the note on the B string is going to be the 20th fret, and you, but you're going to repeat the lick after that. So we have the 20 on the B, and then 17, 18, 19 on the high E, and then so you repeat that a little bit. So we have this. And then we go into this. It's a unison bend, but it's coming from a half step below, which gives it that really 
kind of eerie quality about it. And dissonant quality, I guess is a better word for it. So that's the 17th fret there on the high E, and then the 21st fret on the B string. So you're going to pick those together, and then bend that note up on the B string up a half step to kind of get them to match. And they don't always quite match, which helps keep that really dissonant quality that he has. So it's kind of like, you want them to sound like really disjointed, right? Then you're going to do the same thing, move everything up two frets to the, the 19th fret of the index, and this is going to be 23. And then up to all the way up. So that's kind of the best way that I can really come up with to get that those, those two notes are really it could be he could just be overdubbing that the, the note right there, but you can do it on a 24 fret guitar. All right, so that is it for the solo. All right, so now after the solo, we get back, after all that kind of chaotic like overdubs and stuff, we get back to that whammy riff then. And then that long kind of extended version of the chromatic lick. Just repeats for a while. Uh, but coming out of that, we have that outro section, which is really cool. Um, so I'm gonna play through the outro section real quick. Uh, it's kind of similar to the things we did earlier, but uh, it's definitely more extended. So, uh, so here it is. does that all the way to the it kind of fades out it's fading out right there so anyway so we have a lot of those add nine things going on again so that four off the a string four six on the d eight on the uh um g so the first time just four six eight back to six and then back to eight and then down to six on the g and um then the same thing kind of uh the fifth fret off the low e And then, now this one's a little different. We haven't seen this one yet. We have low E open, two on the A, four on the um, D string, back to two on the A, and then slide four to six there on the um, D string. So, I'm oh, sorry. So we have this. All right, and then we have this, which is basically the same thing we did here, just at the second fret. So all together for the first time through. All right, then uh, the repeat is going to have a little bit more uh, melody action going on the top, the top string each time. So we had this, that's still that same 4, 6, 8, then go back to the 8, instead of going 8, 6, we're going to click 8 and slide up to 9. Then the same pattern here at the 5th fret, so we slide that up from 9 to 11. Now we go here to this the, the octave higher than this E that we did before. And that's going to be 7 on the A, 9 on the D, 11 on the G. So that same pattern, 7, 9, 11, back to 9. Then pick 11, slide up to 13, and then start this shape off the F sharp, add 9, which is off the ninth fret there. Same pattern. Pick 13 again, slide up to 14, so 
So that second time through the melodies. And then we take it up to the higher register. All right, so that's going to be starting basically an octave up from the uh, the C sharp add nine here at the 16th fret. So the same shape, that same pattern we did before. So same thing. And then off the A, that's so just like what we did here. So. And then we take it down to the E here. So we have this 12 on the low E. Uh, so the same shape, instead of at the 17th fret, the same thing done at the 12. And then we take it to the 14th fret there on the A string. And then repeat what we just did. Set the second time through when you get to that, that last one, which is that 14th off the A string. We have this 14, do the pattern once. So 14 to 16 on the D, 18 on the uh, G string, back to 16, and then you're going to change the note on the A string to the 15th fret. Then pick through the same notes. And then we start over, but the picking is a little bit different. So it's the same chords. So that's just that, that 16, 18, 20. And, but then when you get back to the, to the D string, you're going to hit it twice. And then play 20, 18 up top. So, it, so instead of, we have... And then the same thing here, same thing here, same thing there, just repeat. And then the last time here now, after you've done that little, little double picking thing that we did in there, two times around the very last chord, we go, kind of does that, just picks through it like we did before, and then move up that to that 15th fret of the A, and then slide that down, and then it really starts fading out. So it's the same one with a kind of a slide up on the top string. Except for this one, the last one. It's that same kind of initial standard one that we started with. And then after that, it's really kind of fades out. There's a little kind of little thing in there, then everything's kind of faded out. But it's a really cool little stretching exercise, a little picking, just kind of moving all over the fretboard. So it's, it's a really cool section. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. We have taken apart floods piece by piece. Um, hope you got through it. And I will see you guys again soon for guitarlistons365.com.